past seven, time for the very latest weather report. Good morning, Steve Jacobs. Good morning to you, Richard. We're coming to you live this morning from Federation Square in Melbourne. I'm joined by the crews from the Metropolitan Fire Brigade and the Country Fire Authority. We're down here to launch the Winter Fire Safety Campaign. So if you're on your way to work today, stop off at Flinders Station. If you've got any questions about hot spots in your home, ask the crew. And they're also giving out lollipops for the kids this morning who are joining us as well. Having a good time this morning? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's check out the weather and find out what's happening right around the country this week. OK, we've got some very important information about the weather, particularly in the flood-affected zones. Now, New South Wales will receive much respite today from the heavy rain, particularly along the coast. Now, yesterday, not too much rain fell in the uh, flood-affected areas of the Hunter and also the Central Coast, but the Bureau is expecting that intense weather to pick up again tomorrow. So gale force winds and also heavy rains will be back throughout tomorrow and into Wednesday, which is not good news for the disaster areas. But I guess the one good thing that's come out of this is that the water levels are up in the dams. Melbourne water storage is at 28.4%. Sydney water supply at 39.2%. And the Wyvernhoe Dam in Queensland up to 16.18%. So some mixed news there, good and bad. We'll check out that weather tomorrow and find out what's happening in those zones. Good morning, Richard and Lisa. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, we Steve. will be watching that very closely. Now, the man with the most up-to-date local forecast here, Stevie. Good morning to you, Lisa. We are launching the Winter Fire Safety Campaign down here in Melbourne this morning. Some very important points to check out the hot spots around the house. Now, if you've got little kids, like the little fire chiefs that we have here this morning, of course, some very important things to know is if you have fires or heaters to put protectors around them. If you're cooking, make sure the handles of the pots are facing inwards so the kids can't grab them. And God forbid anything should go wrong, these little fire chiefs are going to teach us what to do right after we take a look at the weather. We're going to fly around the country now and find out what's happening in all the regional and local areas around the country. OK, Fire Safety Week. This is the launch. Now, if you've got kids around the home and, God forbid, their clothes catch fire, there are some simple steps to help. Now, it is so simple, we've got one of the CFA's main chief inspectors, Ruby the dog, to teach us what we need to do. Now, it's all about stop, drop, cover, and roll. So let's bring in Ruby. We'll teach the kids what to do just in case your clothes catch fire. Ruby, Ruby, come. Come on, Ruby. Drop, 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 roll. There we go. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Kids, do you think you got the idea there? OK, we've got young Will, Kaima, Lily, Isabella and Molly. Now, take a step forwards. There we go. Now, if the kids' clothes do catch fire, and particularly if they're around open fireplaces, try not to dress them in loose clothing. Now, if it does catch fire, the first thing to do is stop, which we've done, and that's important not to run around because you don't want the air to fuel or fan the flames of the fire. Then, kids, we drop. Drop, young Will, cover, which is very important to cover the face, kids. Number one, so you don't get burnt, and number two, so you don't inhale the gaseous fumes, stop, drop, cover, and finally, roll. There we go. We roll about and we make sure we put those flames out. There's something about working with kids and animals, but I think we've proved that wrong today. It's all going perfectly down here. Now, the important thing is that if you do have some burns, to make sure you call 000, get the kids or whoever under some cold running water into a shower, and then call for some first aid for the ambulance. Done a fantastic job this morning, kids. Give yourselves a big round of applause, our little fire chiefs. And we'll be back with more tips for the Fire Safety Week campaign in the next half hour. See you soon, Lisa and Richard. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, well done, guys. Gee, Thanks, the kids Steve. are having fun, but that's really important advice. It isn't is. It? Uh, the, the advice about um, not wearing loose clothing, yeah. I didn't know that before. No, well, it's all good this morning. Stevie's got some very timely advice for yeah. us. 23. Now for Breakfast Television's latest weather forecast, here's Steve. Yes, good morning to you, Richard. We are simulating a house fire this morning for the winter fire safety campaign. Now, at this time of year, fires in the house are 15 to 20 per cent more prevalent than any other time of year, with people, particularly in colder areas, warming themselves up. And you're looking at a live shot through a thermal imaging camera. And this is what the fire brigade uses to actually do search and rescue and to locate the source of the fire. Poof! Like a Cheech and Chong movie in here, so I think I'll come out. <coughs> And uh, read the weather. We're going to show you what to do if you actually have a house fire. Some very important tips this morning. All right, let's get into the weather and find out what's happening today. In uh, 
OK, it's a winter fire safety campaign. We are simulating a house fire this morning. A few important things to know, particularly if you've got kids, is that in a house fire situation, the hot air rises. So the smoke will rise to the top and you have more oxygen down below. So the important thing is to get down low and go, go, go. So get the kids, kids on their knees or the adults and crawl out to safety as fast as you can. Now, in a house fire, there are a few very important things to remember. One of them is to have a home escape plan so the kids know what to do in case of a fire. Another thing that's important, if you've got deadlocks, make sure the keys are inside the deadlocks so you don't lock yourself in the house. Make sure your fire extinguishers are working, number one. And also important to let the kids know to have a meeting place, like a letterbox. So there is a fire, if there is a fire, the kids can get out and meet at the letterbox. And of course, dial 000 and get the fire brigade in nice and quickly. OK, some more great tips for Fire Safety Week down here at Federation Square coming up in the next half hour. We'll see you then. Thank you, Steve. It is coming